You probably wonder why I'm on an energy panel with a bunch of energy and uh, business experts, but um, I think the issue here is uh, the broader uh, global security issue uh, from the standpoint of uh, what uh, the, the availability uh, and the free flow of energy around the world means to all of us from the standpoint of our politics, but more importantly, our economies. <clears throat> so uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, stationed in Europe uh, for about 14 years of my life, Italy and Germany mostly. Um, spent a lot of time uh, looking at uh, broader geopolitical issues. Uh, in 1990, uh, uh, when Iraq invaded uh, Kuwait, uh, obviously the United States and the coalition responded uh, in kind. And it became apparent at that time that uh, energy was uh, one of the major issues from a national security standpoint, not just for the United States, but for all of us. You have more of a regional view, but you're interconnected to the global uh, energy uh, issue. Uh, when I was in Europe uh, a few years ago as the deputy commander for the United States European Command, uh, we had 92 countries uh, in that command that we were responsible to interface with all the way from Russia down through uh, South Africa. Uh, the Caspian was part of that, as well as the Gulf of Guinea, as well as, of course, the Mediterranean and other areas. Uh, and it became, it became apparent that after the Cold War uh, for the United States uh, European Command, and the United States specifically, uh, that the, uh, the, the security environment in the world had changed. Although, uh, ever since we became dependent on energy from the Middle East in the United States, it's always been a national security issue. Uh, and the free flow of oil around the world uh, is an issue for not just the United States, but as I mentioned earlier, all of us. The United States now, uh, over the last couple of years, has become the largest energy, pr energy producer in the world. We still import seven to nine million barrels of oil per day in the United States, even though we are the largest producer of energy. So uh, a disruption around the world in some way uh, makes a big difference to our economy. And uh, we all know that economy is one of the major national security issues. Uh, since uh, 1990, the United States has spent somewhere between seven and ten billion dollars a year just stationing military in the Middle East and of course over the last few years because of the conflicts that we've been involved with which is a different issue whether that's right or wrong or just as a reality uh, we've spent about a trillion dollars uh, with uh, uh, with military forces in the region so big issue economically uh, the United States uh, I think Theodorus mentioned in Europe there's 400 million vehicles using, uh, using uh, mostly petroleum. The United States has 260 million vehicles uh, and uh, the, the 97 percent of those vehicles use uh, oil as the source of energy. So diversification uh, from a political and uh, economic standpoint in the United States is going to be a huge issue but recently with the uh, new technology for fracking we've become pretty much uh, natural gas independent. So from a military perspective, again, and from a, I think a NATO perspective and a geostrategic uh, objective here in the Mediterranean, uh, the issue of energy will continue to be an issue probably in our lifetime. So from a security standpoint, I'd say energy is a big issue. Uh, terrorism, extremism is going to be a, a, a huge issue. Climate change is a big issue. Uh, the fact of the matter is we're going to have more and more pressure on us to find clean sources of energy uh, and that climate change will force us into that, but it also is going to force us into different uh, military dynamics, movement of people because of uh, potential flooding, potential weather changes. And so the U.S. military is thinking in terms of different security uh, uh, challenges and climate change doesn't necessarily uh, in the United States hasn't been a traditional uh, security issue, but it's becoming a huge security issue. For example, the types of uh, weapon systems we have. The Antarctic is melting because of climate change, and we have to start using more ice. We have no icebreakers in America, per se, except for the, uh, for the uh, Coast Guard. So from a military perspective, the sophistication of the threats uh, in, the, in the world are uh, growing. Now, here in the, in the East Med, I think the Levithian and uh, Tamura uh, gas uh, fines are a huge issue uh, from the standpoint of uh, more energy independence, not just for, say, Greece, but for countries like Israel and 
potentially uh, Jordan, although their political ramifications are. But um, as NATO grows, as we grow as a U.S. military, uh, energy will be one of the top three issues for us uh, in the future. Now, uh, one of the things that we look at in the United States is there isn't any um, energy independence for the United States that makes any sense. We cannot become totally energy independent. Uh, we could become totally energy available, but uh, the global economy is so interconnected that if there are huge disruptions any place in the world, here in the East Med, for example, it's going to affect our economy significantly. 90% of the oil in the world is owned by national owned oil companies, OPEC obviously being the largest consortium, uh, and how they drive world economies uh, are a significant issue. Uh, people say uh, in the United States, not here because you're not as naive as we are, uh, that once ISIS is defeated that uh, the Middle East will become less important to the United States, maybe we could w withdraw troops, etc. Uh, ISIS is, uh, is just a perturbation in the near term. Uh, there is going to be extremism uh, in the Middle East probably for the rest of our lifetime. I've said that before and I believe it. Uh, but energy is not going to go away uh, in our lifetime as a major national security issue. Uh, I was uh, kind of heartened to hear all the different uh, speakers talk about the diversification issue, uh, the fact that you have to use conser conservation as uh, one of the tools, climate change is an issue. Those to me are my, uh, microcosms of the macro issue we all face uh, worldwide. But from a NATO perspective, uh, going back to the original story again, uh, when I became the deputy commander of uh, European Command in 2001, uh, General Jim Jones was the SAC year, the NATO Supreme Allied Commander. We had six uh, U.S. four-star generals in our command. We sat down and discussed what the strategy for the command was going to be. The Cold War had ended. Uh, and, it, and it, interestingly enough, uh, for me anyway, maybe not for you, but for me, we hadn't changed our war plan in NATO since, 2000, since uh, 1989. This was 2002. And the reason was most of us didn't realize what the major geostrategic threats in the world were. We hadn't thought about it. Most of us, many of us thought, hey, the world's come to uh, nirvana. We don't have any real major threats anymore. Uh, and it turned out, uh, what had been evolving is things like energy, the more sophisticated threats than just a force-on-force -force threat, energy, climate change, pandemics, uh, economics, the Gulf of Guinea, for example. Uh, a lot of oil comes out of there that's threatened by uh, extremist groups. Ab obviously, the Caspian, the United States uh, invested 350 million U.S. dollars into the security of the uh, baku tbilisi Chehan pipeline. That's a lot of money. Uh, and, and those issues, as you point out uh, earlier, both the Theodorus's, I thought their uh, presentations were both good, uh, and others, uh, you have a very complex energy uh, mechanism and microcosm here in the East Med that's only going to become, I think, better economically for Greece, which is a, a, an outstanding issue, but also will present national security challenges. And I would just end by saying that uh, my personal belief is that uh, NATO is still the indispensable uh, alliance. Uh, Greece is a big part of that. Uh, the, the challenges that we face in NATO are uh, more complex than ever. They're more diverse. We're going to take a lot of leadership. Uh, the Greece-Turkey uh, issue that uh, I can speak of from a standpoint of a geostrategic flashpoint is not, has not gone away. Uh, and we're all going to face the same challenges that we did back in 1990, only in a bigger, more complex way. And collaboration is going to be uh, important. And the more energy sources, going back to the theme, that we can find uh, to uh, give us more stability around the world and, and decrease the amount of uh, influence certain uh, nations may have are going to be better for all of us. So I hope you succeed here in, uh, in the development of the East Med uh, Energy. Thank you.